Hello and welcome back to the Ambassadors of Gaming. I'm one in your collection of hosts, Ambassador Michael. And today uh, I will be narrating for Daryl on a game that he has recently been playing, Journey to the Savage Planet. So Journey to the Savage Planet is the debut title by Typhoon Studios. They are a relatively new studio formed three years ago by former employees of EA, W Games Montreal, the team behind Arkham Origins as well as add-ons for Arkham Knight, and Ubisoft. What is the game about though? Let's have a brief look into this debut title and see if it's a worthy debut. It's a first person adventure game where you are stranded on a planet you have been sent by uh, Kindred Airspace to explore to see if it is fit for humans to live on. You start with no equipment whatsoever, no idea of what to do, but don't worry, that slowly unfolds in front of you. You have to explore the environment and scan and catalog alien plant life and local creatures. I went into this fairly blind and the game was very good at getting me up to speed, helped with uh, how shall I describe the AI companion, other than extremely sarcastic and full of dry humor. Early on you discover it's not a serious tone in the game. The exploration and cataloging is very similar to No Man's Sky, but a bit more fun in tone. You can gather resources the same as No Man's Sky and craft and upgrade materials and weapons etc etc. Combat is simple and effective, it's no Doom or Wolfenstein-esque quality when it comes to shooting hostile creatures, but it doesn't need to be. It works well for how it's intended. There are some serious sections and boss fights, and you can level up your health and stamina. The gameplay feels nice and smooth and handles well. It feels fun to play and it slowly gets you hooked. The story seems simple so far, so don't expect the narrative as strong as Witcher 3 or Red Dead Redemption 2. It's more accessible to all, I feel. Visually, it's no graphical showcase. It is plain and clean and simple and very bright and colorful. But it works and it adds charm to this game. It's a very refreshing appearance. Detail is there, it's high standard, but more of a sci-fi comic book feel than photorealism. Proof that simple works and can work effectively well. It's not a full price release either. Plus, one point to note, it's also a two person co-op as well as a single player game. So if you want to play with a friend, you both have a couple hours and want something very different in tone and fun, then maybe take a look at this game. It's a fun little game and I've played about maybe 7 or 8 hours so far and really enjoyed it. It may not be a game you can grind and play for hours such as Skyrim or Witcher 3, but for a good 2-3 to three hours gaming, in fact it feels fresh and unique, is one of the reasons it may be worth looking into. It's a promising start from the studio, and hopefully as they grow and expand and become more established, we can see some amazing, amazing titles in the years to come. So there you have it. Uh, Daryl, I think, uh, had some well thought out uh, criticism and uh, analysis there for you. And uh, it definitely looks like Journey to the Savage Planet may be one of the uh, more unique titles we've had at the beginning of the year. So of course we want to know if you've played, if you are playing Journey to the Savage Planet. Uh, if not, if this has encouraged you to check it out. Uh, and if not, we'd like to you know hear about why maybe it's not for you or maybe what, what doesn't and does interest you about it. As always, uh, like, sharing, subscribing always is super, super helpful to us. And if you feel uh, inclined to, you can always subscribe to our Patreon where you get extra content and goodies and all that kind of stuff. So uh, until next time, friends, I'm Ambassador Michael. These have been Daryl's thoughts, and I will leave you with the screenshot bonus round. Goodbye.